chance. What news, Eric? What news are you expecting? Well, I'm getting stick from out of your office. I'm getting stick from everywhere. Look, Tom, trust me, I've played fair with the union so far, right? If I had a million quid in my pocket. Don't go sentimental on me. It doesn't help. Morning, Alison. Morning, Mr. Palmer. Christine's taking your mail. Mr. Freeman in? In your office. Thanks, love. Morning, Gavin. They're uh, waiting for you. Morning. What's the move? Edgy. Come on, then. Right. How's Christine? Morning. One marked private. Coffee in about an hour? Good girl. Good morning. 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 Are you three early, or am I late, or has there been a secret little conclave? Time to face facts, Eric. I agree. Hello. Thanks for the invitation. I didn't find it till just now. You're welcome, Mother. I'll take Sandy's to the shop unless you want to give it to her yourself. Oh, thanks. Those of you invited. What? Oh, Tim, calm down. I'm talking to you. Sorry, Dacor. Who else have you invited? Sandy, Mark, me? Yes. What about your father? Oh, him. You invited him. It would seem to me very much of a last resort when directors are asked to put their hands into their pockets. The new management figures make the company a better prospect. On paper. Well, yes, of course, on paper. Why have these figures suddenly appeared? Why has Gavin produced them and not Michael Gilmore? Mike Gilmore's an excellent accountant. And the company's accountant. Is anybody questioning Gavin's financial ability or judgment? Of course not. At the end of the month, bank charges fall due and the bank reviews our overdraft facilities. We won't survive that. Even so, increasing the value of our existing plant, adding in VAT. It's fair. The second-hand value of the plant's simply been updated to current rates. It's sharp. It's favourable. We've got to have optimistic figures. Who for? For any chance it suddenly turns up. We were discussing your request for us to back the company personally. Same thing, for God's sake. If and when the bank says no more, we've got to have the means to struggle on. For how long? As long as it takes. If there's sudden interest, would you want us to miss it because we shut the place down four days back? Oh, Eric, face facts. Face facts, man. Has anybody got anything constructive to say? We all know the score, Eric. The longer we cling on, the more we lose. Look, this has been a family firm. Sons and daughters working alongside parents. Now, they've been loyal. I think they deserve better than the fastest redundancies we can get. Effie, what do you say? I'd rather agree with Gavin Freeman. Well, forgive me. But I, for one, am not prepared to risk personal loss just to save Eric's face. Yes, that's what it comes down to. Mismanagement. That's what's mainly led us to this, your mismanagement, Eric. As a board, we have never, never been looked upon as anything more than your own rubber stamp. Don't whinge, Roger. Don't bleat. Don't come on pompous, hypocritical. I won't have those remarks in the minutes. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. This is no help. Christine, I know it's early, but what about coffee? Excuse me. Eric, will you be at home tonight? I may just call by for a nightcap. Uh, further to a little conversation we had at my place recently, remember? Any time after nine, but what? Good. <laughs> it's a witty child. 
I love the chorister singing his head off. You'll come. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> what exactly happens at a valediction? Well, they get the dean to come to an ordinary evening service and chat a bit to the boys who are leaving the choir. Parents and friends look proudly on. And then it's end of service and singing days. I shall produce mm. a small valedictory gift. You give him quite enough, Sandy. <laughs> Poor kid secretly thinks the world will come to an end without his choir. Five years is a long time. We're taking him out in the evening to cheer him up. You're invited too. Oh, thank you. Who else is being honoured besides you, Mark and me? I think he's asked his father. I could do without it, but Tim wants him there. Will he come, do you think? I don't know. Just a minute. Tim, thank you for the card. Duckle. As you say. Hello, you. Chicken sandwich, Sandy? Oh, anything, yes. What in your teeth with chocolate? Do you want any change from the bank? No. See you in ten minutes, then. Why, Tim, you're one of Ralph Barton's stalwarts. Tim's told him how much he'll miss any involvement with the cathedral. Do you know, incidentally, that he spends quite some time in the Stanbridge Chapel? Praying? I imagine so. One of the vergers told me. He enjoys grace before meals, and I've occasionally walked in on his bedtime prayers, but I didn't think there was more to it than that. Anyway, if you're agreeable, I'll have a chat with him and see if I can't ensnare him as a cathedral server. Go ahead. It might fill a difficult gap for him. Good. Do you think it's one of God's little jokes, by the way, that I'm a clergyman called Neil and you're a schoolmaster called Mark? <laughs> I'll catch him tonight after evening, sir. Services, you'll probably know the word valediction backwards by now. No, it's to the Latin. Thank you, thank you. So, the dean will stand there. And after the anthem, Mozart, 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 Mozart. I will lead you gravely forward into the decanal presence, where you will gravely hear what he has to say to you and smile at his old jokes in the same pitying way you smile at mine. Then, after the blessing, the organ will blast forth. We three will process out together ahead of the rest, which I imagine you will very much enjoy. So, Tony? Heads. Heads it is. Canticles or anthem? Canticles, Jackson G. Anthem, Tim? Blessed be the God and Father, Wesley. Boring. It's not. Ah, uh, discipline always disintegrates in your last few days. Now, run along and practice, both of you. You're not free of my clutches yet. Go on. For it. Well, you're an obvious choice. Not only because you've seen each and every type of altar service from your choir stalls over the years, because you're captive on the spot. A server who actually lives in the close is worth gold in the school holidays when all others have departed and gone. I can't pretend the perks are many and brilliant, but there is an annual outing. Last year we went to the Royal Tournament. Hasn't he had enough? Let the boy choose for himself. What kind of choice is it after five years brainwashing? I want him to get new interests away from that gloomy damn place over there. I don't know why you're so upset. Well, maybe it's because nobody asks my opinion. 
Ralph Barton mentions to Neil Carolan that Tim might like to serve the cathedral, then Neil comes to ask Mark's permission. All boys together. He should have been a monk. What is this serving, anyway? He's helping out in the important services. Just being an altar boy. Nothing sinister. Well, it's time for Tim to move on. We've a lot to thank the cathedral for. Oh, I'm grateful. Just when Tim needed something to belong to, there it was. It was the family he didn't have. But that was then, before we met you. He doesn't need them now. He needs to move on. Times change. I wish you liked it better here. I do like it. I was talking to the headmaster yesterday. It would make life very much simpler if you'd reconsider and take on a few house duties. Like the other housemaster's wives? Well, it would be simpler. What else did the head say? Well, he thinks it an unnecessary complication to have to arrange cover, to drag over one of the housekeepers from another house when there's already somebody on the spot. And we must remember we have school accommodation and ought to earn it. What did you tell him? I told him I'd mention it. He's just a man, Mark, nothing else. Just a manager whose job it is to get as much as he can for as little as he can, like any manager. Nobody has to nod back, yes, sir, yes, sir. Tell him I have a business to manage, too. I could hardly tell him you don't like kids. Well, I like one, and that's all that matters. Well, let's leave it for now, shall we? Hello. What's the matter? How'd the service go? Have you been rowing or something? No. Our beloved presenter wished words of me tonight. He wants me to be a server. I thought he might, actually. Is that what you want? It's all right with you two. Well, if you didn't like it... I like it. Always... I can do other things, too. When I've got more time without the choir, I can join the bell ringers. There's always help needed somewhere, Mr Carolyn says. Moving chairs, serving tea to women and ladies... Tim, and I can... Tim. You'll have to think about this very, very carefully. I'll go and get changed. He thinks the cathedral's doing him a favour. Let's leave it, shall we? You asked if we could leave it. What's that? Photographs for Tim. What photographs? When a chorister leaves, he presents a picture of himself. What other rites and rituals does the poor kid have to undergo? I've got your photographs. Great. What's wrong with Mum? Oh, you know women. No. Well, I dare say she was hoping to see more of you when your choir days were over. I look quite good, don't I? Don't flirt. <laughs> Do you know their part of the world at all? Geoffrey's firm's between Buckingham and Banbury. It's a craft outfit. Like you, he approves more of making things himself than servicing other firm's products. Anyway, Eric, there you are. It's all down there. We can make his hydraulic cylinders, no problem. It's work to a very high specification. Right. I'll be away now, then, and leave the matter for your further thought. Warehouse facilities? Oh, yes. Jeffrey's looking for a base, I imagine. And if the warehouse costs were sufficiently low, I think Jeffrey could swing his board towards giving you a contract to manufacture. When can we meet? Lift a phone. I've jotted down his home number for you, and I've let him know you may well be giving him a call this evening. He and I have known each other for years. We were at university together, longer ago than either of us would care to think. I'm grateful, Effie. Old duffers have their uses, Eric. Give Geoffrey my best wishes and uh, let me know tomorrow how it went. He's a good chap. You'll like him. And, of course, if there's anything further I can do, ask. Listen, I can't thank you enough. My pleasure. Now, you drive carefully. I will. Bye-bye. Looks all right. Show me a brochure that didn't. At least it gives me something I can do! Oh, the sheer bloody relief of that. Get me a drink, will you? Be careful. You want this deal badly. You may begin bending over backwards, and anyone in that position is begging for a kick up the crotch. Hello? Oh, good evening. I'd like to speak to Mr. Donaldson, please. Eric Palmer. I think he's expecting the call. Thank you. So what do you think? You don't have a choice. Hello? Mr. Donaldson? 
My name is Eric Palmer. I've just spent an interesting hour with Fred Edmonds, who sends best wishes. Yes, that's right. Good morning. Can't sleep. Thank you. Mark, do you believe in God? At this hour. Michael. I suppose with the choir in good voice and the organ thundering away and the sun tickling up the colours in the glass. It's just the music and everything. I don't know. I really don't. That's as close as I can get. Mum hates the idea of me serving, doesn't she? My father will hate it too. Oh, they'll come round. Nobody hates it. It's all or nothing with you, isn't it? The rabble is roused. I'll get dressed. Tim, have a smashing day. Smashing, smashing. Smashing day. Morning. Oh, what's this? The hero of the day refuses to enjoy it. It's not that. Oh, what is it then, my little one? Get oh. off. Tell your mommy. It's being a teenager. It's adolescence. Oh, has my baby got it? Next, it'll be spots, and then girls. Uh, shut up! No, he's quite right. There's not much to look forward to, is there? Eh? Smash, smash, smash! You coming over the house for a coffee? Some minute drink? No, I'll see you at the office later. What's the feeling, Gavin? On the meeting? Of course, the bloody meeting. Well, if personal feelings stay out of it, there's a chance. Isn't it personal to you? I wish you could have arranged this meeting with Donaldson for another day. It's the only time that he can make this week. Well, as long as I'm away by half three, it's my boy's final appearance in his choir tonight. Yeah, you should know your fate by then. All right, let's get the drone going. I'll see it. You sharp today? Tabs which were holding them in place. They had to go back for repair. So, <laughs> Eric, let me introduce Geoffrey Donaldson. Mr. Palmer. Please, Eric. I'm very happy to meet you. Yes, indeed. Gavin Freeman, my financial director. How do you do? How do you do? And let me introduce our financial director, Ted Granger. Ted, pleased to meet you. Wonderful. Now we all know each other, what do we have to drink? Um, Gavin. You're close to Birmingham. Gavin? That's it's right. A disaster area, area, isn't it, for firms the size of ours? Oh, everybody made things for everybody else. When the medium-sized laddies medium began medium. to fold, everybody felt it. There's talk of improvement. Good. Seemed to have hung on better than most. You've had time to study Gavin's figures? Yeah. We have indeed. You and F.E. were at university together. Well, I'll spare his blushes if he'll spare mine. <laughs> 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 Eric disapproves of the old boy network. Well, I must say I sympathise with him. However, this time it may just save the day. A, a small vodka, please. Lots no, of no, time. no, 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 please. Make that a large one, Andy. Right, right. Same again for me. Well, fine. Thanks. I've got a longest drive this <laughs> afternoon. That's all. Six more hours. Where should we be? Out of the choir. Free, free, free. Looking forward to your balls dropping at last. Well, get lots of sticks on. Palmer's not. Palmer hasn't got any. Funny, funny. Yeah. I wish I was leaving the choir. But you'll be number one fielding, head chorister. Big deal. Anyway, I'm a Buddhist, really. But they want Palmer to stay on the search. He's holy. He says cheese. Is your father driving a superlative car now? Yes. I wish the fellows was your father. Then why is my name Palmer? Bloody old thick Dixon. Dixon Dixon. <laughs> hey, what's serving, anyhow? Dixon Dixon. <laughs> Splendid <laughs> lunch, Effie. Thank you. Yes, yes indeed. Thank you. Who was the twerp who said business before pleasure? <laughs> Don't look over here. Oh, no, <laughs> lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I will. Well, now, 
You've seen the presentation that Ted managed to cobble together at very short notice. Are you are you happy about us? We got a lot in common. Exactly. Similar problems, high bank base, generally high interest rates, the whole bloody economic climate. Absolutely. Mm. Materials to finish product. How long? Gavin, you're very quiet. Uh, six weeks. The materials are a priority then. You need good credit facilities too. Naturally. We've sold plant and laid off men. Oh. That's right. We'd tooled up for a special job, up market job that fell through. That was, what, 1983, bad time. What can you do with specialist machinery nobody wants? Mm -hmm. And what did you do with it? Eric sold it off for peanuts. Hey, better than peanuts, Effie, but we lost on it. We really lost. It was quite a shock. You see, Eric's got this idea that he's invulnerable. The one it never happens to. <laughs> well, haven't we all? I wouldn't simply want to service your product. No, 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 I understand that. And I'm sure a contract could be given you to manufacture. Up to a point. What point? Well, we wouldn't want to flood the market. It's specialist and limited. And we couldn't possibly cut back on our own production. Ah, jolly good. Good. Uh, could I have some Thanks. water, please? And so the duck's still dancing, right, on top of the biscuit tin. On the counter, in the pub. In the pub. I don't get this. Shh. And the landlord comes and pays up the ten pounds to the dancing duck, right? Quack, quack. Yeah. And the man goes off and the duck's still, you know, dancing. Sir? I'm listening. And the landlord comes and says, great, thanks, but how do I get the duck to stop dancing? And he says, no, listen. Go on, Jeremy. And he says, take the candle from my biscuit tin. Yes. I still don't get it. There was a candle in the tin. A lighted candle. He never said it was lighted. I get it now. He's stupid. Mr. Fellow spoiled that. Try taking a few deep breaths. What is it, nerves? It's not like you, nerves of steel. Go for a stroll. When did you join your firm, Eric? Eric? I'm sorry? When did you join your company? 1960. Oh. Ah. You must have been a veritable child genius. <laughs> Baby in arms, I remember him. Sixteen-year-old apprentice. Geoffrey, people who make craft items like you, like me, we owe it to train up youngsters. Craft is essential, am I right? Oh, yes. 1960. Four years later, I had control. Twenty-one and I was boss. That was sweet. The Harry Atkinson. Ah, founder? Founder. Harry Atkinson, he set up his factory to convert army vehicles into farm trucks after World War One. When I came along, same plant, same methods, same people! Oh, yes! <laughs> but four years later, we got things moving. Eric was ruthless, Geoffrey. Lucky, too, to begin with. Harry Atkinson took quite a liking to him. Fine man. Good judgment, too. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> when he died, he left half shares to Eric and half to his son. Nice fellow, the son. <laughs> No match for Eric. He was nice, very nice, but no head for business. Academic. Well, he minded. Uh, I didn't go to college. You did, sir. Effie did. Gavin did. I grew up in the College of Life. Quite. Uh, there always has to be a boss who knows what he wants and how to get it. That is right. Somebody anxious to meet a challenge. Exactly. Anxious to win. Eric's a great squash player, by the way. Really? Oh, I play a little. <laughs> Ideal game for you, Eric. Nobody else to rely on or to stand in your way, but nobody else to blame if things go wrong. Excuse me. There are some things a man must do alone, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Another little drink for Eric, Gavin. What do you need from this meeting, Eric? Uh, 
You're not offering to negotiate over a slash. What do you need? Firm reassurance I can take to the bank that we're likely to have a deal. Sorry, this is bloody drinking over the meal. You need to reassure your bank? Yes, that we're likely to have a deal in the near future that guarantees jobs. We can guarantee most. Most jobs, then, and allows us to complete existing orders. The warehouse facilities? No problem. My directors will uh, buy any idea that Ted and I take back, you know. And a full meeting could discuss a deal drawn up by Gavin and your Ted. Right. I'll tell your bank manager to phone Ted tomorrow. <sighs> We've got the odd condition, but uh, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? Certainly would. Well, shall we go back? Uh, don't worry about Fred Edmonds. I don't. <laughs> and what's Timothy Palmer up to? I didn't feel well. I came in to be quiet. Last day in the choir, they tell me. You and Tony, Dean, come into Evensong to speak to you. I bet you can't wait. What, no more 8.15 practices? Remember last winter? I thought we'd have to thaw you out with blow lamps. Right then, well, you enjoy yourself. Have some fun. And let's see you in a few years' time with a scholarship to Oxford, eh? Sure you don't want to drink your water? No, thanks. We rent from you the warehouse facilities at low cost, and in return we give you a contract to manufacture at mutually agreed terms a limited but not a minimal amount of our product. We guarantee your existing orders. We promise the least possible reduction of your workforce. Now, all this to be drafted into a detailed document over the next couple of weeks by Ted and by Gavin. That sounds like an offer we can hardly refuse, Eric. Too good. Now, let me go on, then. The one precondition is that you and your directors resign as a board immediately, Eric. F.E. will be reappointed as a caretaker chairman for the time being and Gavin will be the new managing director. Why? I knew you never liked me. The 60s saw a lot of young chaps all like you, all pushing and elbowing their way in and pushing and elbowing out people and practices that stood for an older, stronger tradition. Know all. Confidence. Well, now it's come up and it's time. Change, you all shouted. Adapt. Well, now you know it's not so easy. I made this firm. Did you? You're a one-man band, Eric. And a one-man band isn't over versatile. Without his instruments, he looks pretty silly. You must have waited a long time to get that off your chest. It was worth the wait. I taught you well, didn't I? Gentlemen, I bid you farewell. Do we have a deal? Yes. And to hell with you all. I'll drive you home. I'm going to see my son. You're in no fit state to drive, Eric. 
I shall still drive. I thank you for your friendly concern. Drunk man. Thank you. <coughs> Can we gather round, please? Right, quiet, quiet now. Before we join the gentlemen of the choir, I should like to say that, as we all know, we are about to sing the final service in which your head chorister and one of his trusty top fours will be taking part. I have here a modest gift for each from us all. They've already put their names in the rogues gallery with photographs, snapshots of every chorister to sing in this cathedral for almost 50 years. It's a, a wonderful tradition. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, sir. And now, let us make their valediction a truly happy occasion. matter if he's a little late. Tim knows he's coming. You'll find us. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified.
I believe in God. Gentlemen, to leave. I can't leave. Come along, sir. We found you a nice seat. You can have some fresh air out. Don't do Come that. On, there we go. The anthem, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Music by Samuel Sebastian Wesley.
thought I could kill him. How could he do that to his son? I don't think he knew what he was doing. Do you see where he went? No. No. Careful. Hello. Congratulations, Tim. Well done. Absolutely. You all right? Everyone keeps asking. Yes. Mm. What have we got there? A leaving present. Well, I don't know why I'm standing around here talking to you people. What time do we reassemble this evening? Come and have a drink. We can all go on together, unless you want to go home for a particular reason. Oh, no. Good. You'll feel better in a bit. I don't think it made any difference to the service at all, Tim. Of course it didn't. He was drunk, was he? That's what the others say. Not worth remembering. We'll have a drink ourselves. You too. Special occasion. Now you're going to keep drinking. Everything in moderation. Cheer up. How does it feel to be free? One of the kids let me in. I, I brought you, you know, these things we got you in Gloucester, boy. Yes. Take Tim and Sandy upstairs to the flat. No, take Tim and Sandy upstairs, please. Get yourself a drink or whatever you want. First thing after righteousness. <laughs> Go in there. You, sir? Me, sir? In there, sir? <laughs> hey! You were terrific! Good service! Boy, I did well, Mum. Hey! See you soon, son. A drink would be wonderful. Come on. You selfish bastard. Look, don't make me. Just. Today I have had enough. All right. Do you know what this day meant to him? I had a bad and difficult time and I got pissed up. It was business. Important business, he wouldn't understand, but it was important, right? I had every time I got pissed off having it. This was not my intention. I could have got a taxi home, but I promised my son. I'm sorry if I've balls up his valediction or whatever you call it, but if that's the worst thing that happens to him in this life, he will die a lucky man. All right. Now, I'll say sorry to him, not you. What are you doing here? Why are you suddenly in our lives? We don't need you. You're a rest cure, a refuge. She deserves better. A real man, a real man who thinks the universe revolves between his legs. Is that what you mean? You're pretty sure of yourself. She chose me. Yeah. She'd tell you about what happened last week when she came up to my place. She didn't. It's understandable. Get out now, Palmer. You want to ask her about it. But you won't. You don't dare. I love my wife! I love my son! Drink talking. My wife. My son. Your wife. Your son. You can't own people. Nobody owns Elizabeth. Nobody owns Tim. Now get out. You boys clear the hall. I'll see my son now. Don't you listen. Don't you learn. Get out, Palmer. You're a joke. You wouldn't last ten minutes in any business of mine. Get out. Stay out. Leave us alone. It's all right, is it? 
you know, to take the things that my father bought me. Oh, take them, bloody things. 